Hello, and welcome back to another video. Uh, I apologize for the lack of content for the last few months. I've been working very hard on trying to find something to do, but it's been very cold and it's been very difficult for me to find stuff to do. Uh, but if you guys have any ideas of what we might be able to do in the future, make sure you comment that down below. But with that said, let's get this done. So we're gonna, today we're going to be talking about what's in front of you right now, but Paley and Quince, if you want, you can get some better lighting. Now, Bipalian coins is a species of terrestrial planarian native to Southeast Asia. Uh, this is very important to understand where it's from if you want to take good care of this animal. Um, it got here, you may be wondering how did I find it in my backyard, or if you haven't found it and you just want to keep it, then, well, you have to find another way to get it because they don't sell them. But if you're wondering where you got it, it probably came into pie plants, and this is where it usually appears. As you can see, it's pretty long. Here's my finger for comparison. Uh, it can get up to 12 inches, though, but the longer it gets, it gets kind of skinny. Um, now, you may be wondering, how is it reproduced in this new environment? Well, unlike most animals that have to have another animal of a different sex to mate, but, uh, but Palin Quinn's is hermaphroditic, meaning it's both girl and boy at the same time. And it doesn't reproduce by doing that. It can reproduce, though, by itself by something called binary fission where it basically rips itself in half and each end goes into a whole new flatworm. So this is how you can also reproduce it in captivity, but more on that later. Um, another fun fact about these, these remarkable animals is it's one of the few terrestrial invertebrates that produces tetrodotoxins, which is amazing because we can also use this in self-defense, but also scientists are starting to wonder if it uses this in eating. Um, so, with that out of the way, now we know what basically it is, let's get into the care. Now, it can be kept on paper towels, as seen here, but this isn't actually its environment. This is actually this section of another flat room right here's environment. This specimen right here actually lives in this dirty enclosure. That's okay, because that they're okay with that. They don't need a very clean enclosure. Uh, just make sure they don't have feces, I and mean, dirt's actually very good for them. Not poop. <laughs> So, uh, but in, in, as the enclosure is concerned, we're going to put the lid on this as I talk about this. It's very important to have stuff for it to hide under. We have, in this container, we have leaves, dirt for it to hide under, uh, and it, as you can see, it doesn't have a light. I might be getting a light on it soon, but for now, it's not going to have a light. Um, so the enclosure can be very simple like this, or it can be a very beautiful vivarium, which I'm actually planning on doing soon with live plants and moss. Um, so it, there's a lot of variation, but the most important part of the vivarium is to make sure it stays damp at all times, damp and humid, because this is a tropical species. Um, but as far as feeding goes, maybe you may be surprised to learn that it's actually a carnivorous predator. That's basically the same thing, but okay. But you see, my penguins may seem like just an ordinary earthworm that eats leaves. Well, you're wrong. It actually preys on other on earthworms, not other earthworms, because it's not an earthworm. <laughs> so, contrary to popular belief, it's not actually an earthworm. Anyways, it actually eats other earthworms and grabbing onto the earthworm with its head, which uh, clamps down and wraps around the earthworm and inserts its pharynx into it. Um, so, we can replicate that activity by just giving it earthworms. I recommend you feed it outside the enclosure, but if it won't eat, and for a while, you just leave the earthworm in the enclosure, and it'll eventually track down the earthworm. Um, so you just make sure you keep the earthworm, make sure the enclosure is damp. Um, now, the next point about lighting, you don't need lighting. Actually, lighting is kind of detrimental for the species, as it's very uh, photosensitive. And I recommend, uh, if you're going to want light, use red lights instead. Otherwise, it will hide all the time, and you'll never see it out. But... You can use red light since it does not detect red light. Um, as far as temperatures go, I recommend you keep it at around uh, 60 degrees at the coldest, about 80, 85 degrees at the highest. Um, but I recommend around the 70s is the, probably the most adequate temperature for the species. Um, you can do, we can do, it's basically room temperature, but if you live in a house that's basically a winter wonderland, make sure to give it a, a heat, heating uh, unit. Um, if you want to make more of them, they're pretty easy. You just take scalpel or something, or anything sharp, and just cut it in half. I recommend you actually cut it uh, one-third the way down on uh, the tail end, 
around right here. Uh, because you want to try and leave as much of the divisional flatworm intact in case the other half doesn't survive. Uh, but this new half will grow a whole new head, mouth, everything uh, it needs to survive. Uh, and that concludes our care guide on how to take care of this remarkable animal. If you have any questions, make sure to comment down below. And make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And if you want me to create a very nice vivarium for the species, make sure to either like the video and comment but a platform vivarium in the comment. But that, thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you again in another video. Thanks, goodbye.